Do you know this feeling? You see a card made with a new product and you just have to have it. You order it and when you get it in the mail, you don't remember why you wanted it. Me too. This time, I decided to act before ordering. Sometimes Limes helps me get over that need because I really like the look of the card more than the product itself. And sometimes it doesn't, and that's okay. Stay with me to the end to find out whether I ended up ordering or not. Here's the inspiration for my friend Jessica. I love these comb flower dies from Honeybee Stamps, but do I really need them? Let's find out. I'm going to use my Limes method to transform my inspiration into three cards of my own. First, I analyze Jessica's card by listing all the elements. I usually start with colors. For me, this is the most obvious visual link to an inspiration, and I absolutely love the intensity of the reds and yellows against that navy blue background. Next, I look at the elements. There are layered flowers, a big gold scripty sentiment, and tiny dots on the background. Making sure to include at least some of the elements also helps to achieve the look of the inspiration. Finally, I look at the techniques. We've got the die cut flowers, stems, and leaves. Jess has used Copics to color everything, and she heat embossed the sentiment. I think techniques can easily be changed while still getting the look, and I'll show you what I mean. Now I'm still celebrating Christmas in July, so my cards are all going to be Christmas themed. For my first card, I'm focused on the flowers, and I used my gel plate to create some red and green cardstock for a poinsettia. I keep my 5x7 gel plate on this cheap plastic IKEA tray in one of my Alex drawers. I put a piece of silicone matting down and then the gel plate on top. When I store it, I have a piece of thick acetate on top of it. This gives me a surface that's easy to move and I can work on it without having to worry about getting ink or paint on the work surface. I'm trying out one of the new Tim Holtz sprayers. It's compact and I like that it has these little feet to rest on and hold the brayer up away from my desk. I love using my gel plate because it's quick and easy and I don't feel any pressure to get a smooth blend. In fact, I prefer more texture. It may surprise you to see that I'm starting with yellow ink, but here's my thinking. Jess's red and green colors are both yellow based and I'm thinking I can use the same yellow ink as a base for both of my colors and that will kind of tie all the colors together a bit. I've seen watercolorists do this, so I hope it works here. At least I know it won't clash. I pounce the ink in various places onto my gel plate. I don't worry about covering the whole thing because I want lots of variation in color when I'm done. Then I take the little brayer and I roll it back and forth over each area. I do spread it a little, but again, I'm not worried about full coverage. I put the cardstock down onto the gel plate, rub my hand over it to give it a chance to transfer the ink, and then I pull it back. Then I move on to Samba. Samba? Samba? I don't know. Samba, let's say, which is a bright orangey red. I put a little more down than the yellow, but otherwise I follow the exact same steps of spreading it out with the brayer and then picking it up with the cardstock. One thing I've found with this method is that the more layers of ink you put down, the smoother the colors will get. So since I want lots of texture and color variation, I want to limit this to three or four layers, and I try to put the color down in different places, again to get that variation in intensity. So now I'm pretty happy with this one, I'm going to move on to the green. Again, I start with that yellow. Jess's leaves are quite a bright spring green, so a yellow base is a perfect place to start. When the yellow's done, I do a couple of layers of grass skirt until I'm happy with it as well. Now, even with the amount of texture here, the colors will smooth out a bit as they dry, so don't be afraid of a lot of variation if you like this look. I'm using this Alta New Modern Poinsettia die set. I love how irregular the shapes are. Every time you layer it up, you'll get a different look. I cut all the layers from my red cardstock. So this is checking the boxes of the flower and the layering dies from the list of elements. But I'm only going to make one poinsettia rather than three smaller ones. Modifying the number and size of your elements are great ways to make your card different from the inspiration. I only cut one layer from the green card stock. I can keep the rest of this panel for a future project. Before I assemble though, I got out my Altenew metallic watercolors, spritzed some water into the little gold pan to activate it, and then I splattered over the red and green layers with a paintbrush. This will add some gold to my card as well as shine and play into the dot element that I listed earlier. I layered up all the red pieces and added a yellow center that's the same color of yellow ink that I used as the base for my red and green. 
To add the leaves, I'm just going to pull this green die cut apart to give me the flexibility to put them peeking out where I want them. I used liquid glue for this. For my background, I used this cover plate die from Agilian Vance Design and some navy cardstock. This will give me the dots element. Because it's a rectangle with stitching on the edge, I will have to cut it down to fit onto my square card. When I looked at the poinsettia, I felt like the colors had dried back quite a bit, and I wasn't getting the same vibrancy that Jess's card had. I wished I had blended some more of that Samba ink around the edges. See, Samba! <laughs> and I thought I would take a risk and see if I could add some now. I started by lifting the red leaves individually, but then I pulled out a piece of acetate to help protect the leaves I wasn't blending ink onto. It was a little awkward, and I definitely recommend being smarter than I am and doing it earlier, but in the end it worked out. Okay, let's evaluate this card. I've included all the colors, the dots, the flower, and some gold. I've modified the occasion, one larger flower instead of three. I used my gel plate and ink blending instead of Copic coloring, and a die cut background instead of paper. I excluded heat embossing and a sentiment. And my spin is that I used my signature four and a quarter inch square format. I love this size because it still fits into an A2 size envelope and it doesn't require any extra postage. For card number two, I left the flowers behind and used three letters instead. This pretty pink posh joy die. This time I am ink blending and I do want a smooth blend. I start with the yellow in the center and then I put green down on one edge and red down on the other. I went back over the panel until I was happy with the smooth blend and the coverage. And then I cut the letters out. To add some more vibrancy, I then blended a darker red on the bottom of each letter and a darker green on the top. The contrast and intensity of the colors is really what appealed to me on Jess's card, and this is an easy way to mimic that. Next, I used the same cover plate die, and I put the letters through my die cutting machine with it. This is going to give me the dots element, but instead of being on the background, they'll be right in the focal point of the card. I had already cut the letters out of white cardstock three times and stacked them up so that the dots will appear white on the letters. I think this is really fun. Next, I used a To The World sentiment, my Misty, and some gold embossing powder. The heat embossing is a direct link back to my inspiration, although the sentiment is much smaller, text instead of script, and also in a different place. To place the letters, I used my Mini Make Art Station and a magnetic ruler. This makes it so easy to see where the center of the card is, and the edge of the ruler helps to ensure that the letters will be straight. I generally start placing the letters in the center, then place the outside letters and fill in the rest. Since there's only three for this card, it's a pretty quick and easy job. Now let's see how I did. I included the colors, three colorful die cut elements, and gold heat embossing. I modified the flowers to letters, I ink blended them rather than Copic coloring them, and I put the dots right onto my letters rather than in the background. And I moved that heat embossed sentiment, as well as using a smaller sentiment. And again, I made the card a square. Okay, here's my final card, and I think it's my favorite. I'm starting with Christmas light die cuts from Agilian Vance Design, and I'm going to try a technique I saw Erica use to really make them look like they're glowing. I'm also trying coloring on acetate, which is another hack from Erica. I've found that coloring on glass is much easier than an absorbent surface, and I wonder if acetate works the same, but without having to get out my heavy glass mat all the time. For the red, I started with my darkest shade right around the edges, and then I worked my way to my lightest shade. Here's a few things I learned while doing this. Number one, yes, the acetate works fine, but I did end up with alcohol ink on it when I was done with each color. This came up easily with rubbing alcohol, and I realized that it's probably the same on my glass mat, but because the mat is black, I didn't see it, so this might actually be better. Number two, you really want to saturate these to get a good blend. That means going over the area a number of times, and the die cuts are literally wet from the ink. Number three, I don't think it matters whether you go dark to light or light to dark. I tried both and they both worked well. Because I went over it so many times, I don't think the order really played a big role. Number four, contrast is key. You want a really dark, dark edge and a light, light center to get the look of a glowing light. I colored two large red bulbs and two each of yellow and green, but with the smaller die cut lights. I left the ends uncolored because this die set has a separate die for those, which I cut from gold satin cardstock. Before I assembled the card, I added some Nouveau Crystal Glaze to each of the lights for some shine. Then I sprinkled some iridescent glitter into the wet glaze for a sparkly finish. 
These are pretty big areas, so they took quite a while to dry, but I love the festive touch. To finish the card, I die cut the bulb ends from that gold satin cardstock, and I used a scripty die cut sentiment, again stacked up with gold on the top. Now let's see how this one stacks up. I included the colors, three elements, well, kind of. I do have six lights, but I tried to group them into three. A scripty sentiment, Copic coloring, and die cuts. I modified the flowers to Christmas lights, and my gold script sentiment is a die cut rather than heat embossed. I excluded the dots, although maybe the flecks of glitter play into that a little bit. And again, I used my square card. Using limes to get the look is a great way to test yourself, to see if you really want that new product or if you can live without it. I'm happy with my cards, but I still really want to play with those flower dies. So yes, I ordered them. They'll be my Christmas in July present to myself. And speaking of Christmas in July, I'm getting so excited for the Cardmaker Success Summit. I'm one of the teachers and we're only a week away from this free four-day event. The classes themselves are pre-recorded, but after each video presentation, the teacher will be available live to answer your questions and interact with the class. I'd love to see you there after my class. If you want to get a jump start on your holiday cards, I've put a link below where you can sign up for your free ticket. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time!